Hi everyone, back again, take two today. <laughs> really looking forward to this one. I won't start talking about running. <laughs> I'll stop myself. Um, just give a few minutes and uh, Ray will be joining us. And uh, yeah, I hear, uh, I've heard fantastic things about Ray from um, Sabina Brennan, who will be with us on Friday. Uh, so actually the last interview of the week is on Friday with Sabina. So um, yeah, it's a great lineup. I have to say I'm enjoying them all so far. So hopefully everyone is. And tomorrow we have uh, Dr. Moscone, which is super. And um, do just remember to register for it. It's a webinar. It's not um, on Instagram. So there's a link in the bio. So register there um, if you're going to join us. Um, do join us if you can. I I I, uh, I think it'll be fantastic. I'm so looking forward to it tomorrow. <laughs> um, but yes, just going to check and see if um, Ray has joined. Okay, not yet. Uh, hopefully, some of you. I don't know if any of you saw the chat earlier with Diane. Ah, oh, here's Ray. Okay, great. So we'll just give him a sec there. It's funny how everything leads back to oxygen, the brain, exercise, eating last night. Hi, Ray. How are you? Hello there. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Not too bad, no. Happy Tuesday. Yes, happy Tuesday. It's a lovely, thrilling it's lovely Irish rainy day, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of, um, I'm very immersed inside this week, so. <laughs> ah, nice. Enjoy it while you can. Yeah, well, I, I went. I did go out early this morning to to get my run in, you know. Um, nice. Yeah, it had to be done early because uh, it's a kind of a, it's a busy week, right? <laughs> which, is, which is great. But listen, it's it's fantastic to have you on. And um, I was just saying earlier, I'd heard uh, fantastic things about you from um, Sabina Brennan, who met you down in Cork recently. Um, I think she was down with um, TV, one of the TV uh, channels. Yeah, it's rich, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, so I guess really, you know, we, we've chatted, the, the, the theme of the, the week really is, it's all, we're talking all about brain health. And I was just saying earlier before you came on, it's funny, you know, the conversation so far, every single, like there's been three interviews so far, every single one of them comes back to oxygen and exercise, you know? Yes. And, it's it's literally, I guess to me it doesn't matter what form it is. Once you're being active, and um, you know, I think it's fantastic to have someone like you who can kind of basically just talk us through. I know because like like you, I'm into exercise. I know why I do it, but I guess not everybody does, and it's just kind of reminding us of of why we should do it. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> right. Well, we've all hopefully uh, have done some activity that we've really enjoyed, whether it will be working out or exercising or going out for your walk or run, or else if it's just like to say a game of tennis or rock climbing. If it's an activity that's physical and you enjoy it, then that's what you should nearly focus on because if you enjoy that kind of stuff or you enjoy a game of squash or you enjoy hiking in outside nature, which is fantastic for you, but you don't like going to the gym, you don't like that kind of in your uncomfortable surrounding, that's fine. Keep doing the activity that you do like because that will end up feeling like a chore when you're going to the gym and you'll feel like just another thing that you have to do because you should. And you'll nearly feel good cheating on it and not going. But if it's something that you're looking forward to and you know that you get benefits from it, like for example, you, uh, you I, went I, down to New York. I had this up. Remember, play, play, play and fun. So you've, you, you started off exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And like even just say if I'm designing kids' workouts and things like that. Like, there's no point getting them to do, like, just say, 10 squats and 10 push-ups. They're, they're distractions. They'll just go. They won't enjoy it or whatever. It's just doing fun exercises, fun movements. And as long as you're having fun and you're enjoying and looking forward to something, it'll never feel like a chore. It'll actually, you'll feel great. You're looking forward to it. And then afterwards, all these endorphins fly out and you're feeling top of the world, as opposed to something you're like, oh, no, after work, I better do this run. And if you just hate running, it's something that you're like, oh, God, just give me the night off. <laughs> and it's funny, you know, I'm not a gym person. I was years ago, I used to go, you know, when I was, you know, I, I used to go kind of on a regular enough basis, but really it wasn't for me. And I think once I discovered running, um, that was it. And I knew that's what works for me. 
Um, exactly. Like, uh, like everyone has their, like to say, their preference. Like, for example, I have sisters that are twins. And for one stage that I was, one lived in London, one lived in Dublin. One got really into, you know, the gym and those boot camp classes and those total body hits and muscle endurance. While the other one got really into spin. Now, and they're like okay. identical twins, everything, best of friends. But like one got really good at spinning and the other one got really good at this. And they didn't like kind of crossing over at first because, you know, they just felt uncomfortable. They were going through the pain for the first time. They're like, oh, I don't like this at all. And uh, yeah. you just always go to something that you do like and, and are comfortable with. Eventually, they did just say cross train and tried each other's ones. And they're both good at very, they're both very good at both of them now. But it's just like trying something new as well that you're comfortable with. For example, like when you went out for your jog this morning, like it's not the best weather outside, it's not too appealing, but I'm sure you've been out in jogs plenty of times. And the first few times it's probably sunny. You're like, oh, nice day, I'm going to go for a jog. And like after five or six times, the rain eventually catches you, like no matter what, and you get home soaked, but you still feel great about the run. But you've done that now a few times. You've, you've been through the hard slog of getting tired and the muscles achy and going out again. Well, if you get someone else to go jogging for the first time and you look out the window and it's raining, they're like, I'm not doing this. So again, yeah. it's something that you will enjoy. For some people, it's literally dancing. Like just at home, putting on their favorite songs, even onto YouTube, for example, and just dancing around. Like after three, four songs, you'll start sweating anyway. As long as you're moving enough, like, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you have to, oh God, you have to enjoy it. And I think particularly... It's even more important as you get older because yes. I, I just, I'm a huge believer of there's no point doing something for the sake of it. You know, it's, it, it has to be because it makes you smile, makes you laugh, yeah. you, 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 get, you get a kick out of it. But um, just to, like, so when we, when, we, Ray, when we look at the brain, right, so like our brain in terms of weight is only, it's actually only 2% of our, our body weight, right? But when it comes to actual energy, like the brain uses about 20 to 25 percent of the energy stores in the body, which is just like I just constantly find that baffling. But but the whole thing, what brings it back to brings it back to is and last night, Dr. Mary Ryan was talking about the importance of um, oxygen and blood flow in relation to to brain health. And one of the things is that obviously the blood vessels are carrying the oxygen that then is going back into the brain and like yeah. when we exercise we're getting more oxygen which is giving more kind of it's more nourishment yes exactly yeah but you'll see a lot of things when when you're getting older and or even not even when you're getting older if you're recovering from an injury and things like that like physios and doctors will always say poor circulation you'll always hear that thrown around the place What's and like point? just poor circulation just say in general is like oh you know, you've poor circulation, that's why that could be a bit sore, that's why it's not healing as fast as it usually should, and things like that. So it's, it's very underestimated, the, the uh, blood circulation. So even if you are doing a workout at home, I try to stay away from the classic gym programs where it's like chest day and leg day, where I try to do total body in the same day. So the blood, just say you're doing upper body exercise and you're pushing away and you're getting tired, which is great, and then when your arms start to get tired and you lose technique, then you do a lower body exercise, whether it's like squats or sitting up and down from the chair. Then the blood goes back down to the lower body. But it keeps going up and down and up and down. It's the exact same thing as, like to say, getting electricity and oxygen to the brain. It keeps it firing. And as long as you're getting some sort of a challenge, then your body's going to react to it and react positively to it. Because it's like a defensive system anyway, your whole body. So yeah. if you're getting used to walking and doing the same thing day in, day out, then your body has built up a defense system. And that's why you get used to something. So if you're always walking and then all of a sudden you go home and you get some resistance bands, just say like these, and you're doing these exercises for the first time and like just say going up and down at first, your muscles will feel tender, of course, because it's a challenge that your body has faced that you haven't faced before. And that's why you will feel tender. But after a while, you get used to it again. And that's a good one. That's a good one for just when you're sitting and you're like, I guess, you know, sometimes you know, I often think with, with exercises, we've got to tweak it in terms of if you're sitting at a desk all day, you know, ideally you want to be getting up, you want to be moving around because remember every time you move, it's oxygen to the brain, you're helping your brain. Exactly, yeah. I guess what you're doing there, even though you're not physically moving your legs, you're not walking around, but the yeah. movement of the arms is still yes. getting that whole oxygen flow through the body, right? Exactly, yeah. And like, even like, if you want to, 
play like to say different exercises like if you have someone at home to train with or even if you're by yourself there is different games to say even like just say box and you're reaching across and you have to say two different color <laughs> two different sirens like that two different color cushions or something like that so you can get someone to go just say um these are my fiance's decorations by the way so you have like one light and one dark so pink and purple lovely colors i know so I'll just say you like that and you go to say uh purple and you hit that one pink pink purple and you get them thinking as well so they're not only thinking but they're also exercising so at first it's not the most challenging thing but after a while like after a minute or so of doing it and constantly thinking is a pink purple purple pink and obviously then after a while you try to catch them out make it a bit fun but you keep them thinking fast like that you know and what the orders I say pink you have to hit purple and vice versa so there's different things like that that you're exercising but you're also staying sharp whether yeah. it's holding that's, a movement and you do a little quiz that's that's a great one ray because like i think every, all of us probably are something or plenty of cuddly toys in this house <laughs> exactly and it's just the colors of stuff so. you're making it better by actually saying the name because then you're doing the connection into the brain right the neural pathways and everything exactly yeah so there's different kind of like sensory type exercises now they you try to make them as fun and not thinking as possible just so you can switch off and just play the game pink purple purple pink like that try to get them kind of mixed up so they stay sharp you can also make noises so they have to just think of the noise and that's what you react fast to you can going to go um just colors so it's just going colors different reactions and you can do the same thing you say standing up and just say you have something green yellow red and you say color and you're going to go over it and just touch it in the back so then you're also doing like a uh, reaction exercises that gets your brain thinking but that's at the lower body so it's not too challenging like doing one or two reps so you can do it for a minute or so but it also gets the brain thinking and one that I do like to do as well you can do it with kids you can do it I do it with all my clients as well like uh, elderly any age uh, all together is just literally having a quiz so if they're doing a squat hold or a plank or something like that or even stair jumps or running on the spot just so like after 20 30 seconds the brain switches off and if you're an office worker for example you start thinking of those emails you have to send those spreadsheets you do and things like that so you usually keep the exercises for a 20 second mark after that you start getting distracted but in that 20 even 30 seconds just ask them random quiz questions just so they're kind of thinking of something and they're switching off in the pain a little bit like simple quiz questions name the four beatles name the four teddy tubbies silly things like that just nice and easy so they can get actually rack off the answer yeah that that's that's super and listen to me if people to find out more about these kind of the reaction exercises because i'm thinking like straight away we try and get my mom uh, who has dementia to do some my sister's had her doing joe wicks for a while but anyway okay. <laughs> and she's getting moved she's getting going it was for older you know but but those reaction exercises are fantastic so where where would people kind of find out more information about those or is it like just follow your web your, your yes um, at the moment my main uh, kind of uh, contact would be instagram at the happy fitness guy which is this here and obviously facebook and stuff so um, my app is coming out soon but it'll just be the exercises for uh, elderly and yeah. on there already but there is going to be ones coming up just say for sensory things uh, fun yeah. exercises so like you don't actually have to explain why but you'll see after say a week two weeks three weeks you see the improvements going faster and faster where you can like just stop and thinking and it's nice to see where it's a quicker reaction you're just getting going like that and uh, it's a nice one because it's also physical exercise as well and you're having a laugh with the person that you're training with as well yeah that that they're brilliant and that's i can just like for the brain god they're they're fantastic exercises okay yeah and just in terms of um like exercise in general um like are there any particular ones that uh, you'd kind of i know we're saying it's pick what you what you like and what you enjoy but is is there any ones in particular that you would kind of say um kind of top it in terms of you know all around fitness and can be really good for you or yeah so like i'd nearly break it up into a week or two weeks where like just say if it's a certain activity that you love doing just say like hiking or rock climbing i know you can't go climbing many rocks at the moment but like <laughs> if there is something like you only can do once a week keep that at once a week and then break up the rest of the week into activities so if you're not really doing much you can aim for just say 6 hours over the week which is just say half an hour a day real life hits 
the Tuesday or Wednesday, they, you didn't get exercising, you had to make the kids lunch or whatever like that, then you still have four or five days to catch up on that. Even 15 minutes a day, boom, you're back on track after two days. So yeah. you break it up like that. Um, always try to do an activity that you do love because then that's something that you look forward to. Mm-hmm. After that, then obviously a lot of people have activity trackers at the moment and that kind of just shows, it's really good for people that are sitting down a lot because it just gets them off their feet and like that. Like So then you have some people that are just naturally hitting that 10,000 steps a day kind of mark. So they're naturally more just um, walking around that bit more, blood flowing around the body constantly. But for just say exercises alone, uh, what I like to break it up into about five, six different things. I like to go upper body, so kind of more muscle endurance or strength. So the upper body, I break up into two parts, which is push and pull. So just say, pushing yourself, just say off a table, on like a countertop, you know, hands wide, really stretching here. Just doing a push up, up and down like that. I'm getting very close to the camera, sorry guys. <laughs> and like that. So that's just say a push exercise, pulling yourself up like that. So that's doing the front and back. So chest and all the back muscles as well. So you can do that, let's just say 15 to 20 reps if it's something that you're comfortable with. If you're in a regular gym goer and you want to do chest press with dumbbells or push-ups, again, go to the reps that you feel comfortable with. Then you go for push and pull on the upper body. And the lower body, I just have usually is one section. So that's just movement correctly. That's what I usually focus on because a lot of people don't move correctly for their legs. So um, I'll come back to that in a second. So I have push, pull, upper body, lower body, and I have strengthening that as well, muscle endurance. Then I'd have okay. balance exercises and stability, whether it's standing on one foot and just say planking, things like that. Also core. So it's obviously good to build your core and mobility. So you have a few things in there and high intensity. So if you've been doing your high intensity workout during the week, you can kind of skip it at home. Otherwise, it could be just marching up and down the stairs. It could be dancing to your favorite song, something that you'll enjoy even for a minute straight, something high intensity, get the heart rate up. So that way you're doing a strengthening exercise, front and back, lower body. You're doing some stability exercises where you're really holding it, switching everything on, which is brilliant for people of all ages, of course. Uh, you can obviously see the benefits yeah. more for older people, but um, just balancing and feeling more secure in themselves. And then obviously core and mobility, just getting the body moving and having a bit more fluid again. So we're trying to break it up with that. Even one exercise per each one at home, uh, doing five to ten reps each, a couple of rounds that you feel comfortable with. But when you do start working out, do try things for the first time. You will feel that bit tender. So do give yourself a day off as well, just to get used to things as well. So if you're trying new exercises, you will feel a bit sore and tender. So don't worry about that. Give yourself that rest because your body does need to recover as well. Yeah, yeah. And I like, I like the fact, um, uh, the exercises you're showing there, they're ones that you can do at home. Because, you know, obviously now with COVID, there well, there isn't any gyms open yet, I, I don't think, but it's kind of, it's not, o- not only that, because we do tend to be busy, I think it's really important that to do the push and pull and exercise like that, that it's accessible, that we could do it like, you could do that one nearly when you're waiting for the kettle to boil, you know? That's exactly, yeah. And even just a couple of reps here and there, it doesn't have to be a big workout every time, even the three, four minutes the kettle is boiling, a few different, uh, just say push-ups off the kitchen table or countertop, Holding out the countertop, few squats, really stretching out the glutes, pushing through the heels, so doing it correctly. So, again, you're just kind of really stretching like that, and it keeps the muscles activated as well, feeling stronger. Because what a lot of people do in the gym in different movements is working the tendons and ligaments and going through movements not as much, and they think they're doing the right thing, so they end up coming in a bit more sore than they should. Okay. And I think that, like, that's, sorry, Ray, there's just um, there, there's a question there, the specific exercises for women in mid-40s. The one thing I would say there is that, and I know we've talked about this, Ray, is that you have to be very careful. The exercise you are doing kind of when you hit your mid 40s, that you're not overtaxing your body and that when it comes to weights and so forth, you really have to be careful. You mentioned it a minute ago that you have the posture right, that you're moving right um, and that you're not going off picking <laughs> huge heavy weights that you no. start very well, Oh, definitely. Like even like just say if you can't get to the gym at the moment, there's a company called Max Sport, Irish company, and they deliver loads of stuff. I get resistance bands off them, for example. And that's nice and light. Just say these resistance bands here. Yeah. And what a lot of people do in the gym, they're trying to throw through and they're trying to kind of count the amount of reps they're doing. But uh, nice and slow, time under tension. So you're challenging the muscles. So you're going up and down slowly, 
like that. So it can be light as a feather, the band. But you'll see after, just say, a couple of reps, you'll feel the muscles really start to shake, your arms feel a bit jelly, and that's what you can work with. So again, people of any age and, and women over 40, you're just challenging your muscles for the first time. So you don't need heavy weights at all. Because all weight training, like all those dumbbells and heavy weights, all weight training is resistance training, but not all resistance training is weight training. So again, you can use resistance bands, you can use body weight, you don't have to buy any equipment if you don't want to, but you can just get in through the movements like that. Um, great ones for, just say, um, people as they're getting older, they don't want to work out as much. So if you're running a lot, you know, you don't want to be too short of breath. So as long as you're able to chat or able to talk a little bit, that's great. But if you're able to sing, or if you're not able to sing, then, uh, or you shouldn't be able to sing, sorry, but you should be able to talk. If you're not able to talk when you're working out, then you can start slowing things down. You never want to get too uncomfortable, especially as you're getting older, but really hit the muscles. So trying to hit the muscles, like just say for squats, and I'm using this chair here, and I'm just sitting down slowly. So I have my hands out in front like that, pushing through the gear, and then just slowly, slowly out. So five, four, three, two, one. Holding it here, five, four, three, two, one. That's only one squat, but 10 seconds of tension, as opposed to just kind of going up and down like that, using a bit of momentum, you're hitting your joints, your front of your knee, the patella tendon, that starts to swell up. And even just slow movements, you don't have to be out of breath or short of breath. Slow movements are really, really beneficial and you're much more comfortable because I could say, okay, guys, we're going to go for 10. And after five or six, you're like, ooh, get into your legs. You can just take that breath and wait and then move on to the next exercise. You'll see a week later, the six reps, you'll be able to do eight. So again, always kind of challenge your body to how you feel comfortable. And I think that's, that's I can't say how important that is as we get older. It's, it's the slow movements are actually nearly better for us in terms of the bone health and, you know, kind of keeping our bones, keeping our bones and keeping our muscles moving so that they don't actually forget the job that they're meant to do, right? And exactly, think, yeah. Of yoga, um, I would do yoga at home now, and I find yoga it works really well for me with the running because it gives me that kind of really slow, gentle stretching. Yes, and then obviously, is the running is more vigorous. But what I don't do, Ray, and I, I, I know that I would need to do is that I, I'm not doing any weights. Um, yeah, so that's the thing they, you know, like the push and pull and things like that that you were talking about. Um, that's kind of a thing that I would need to incorporate in what I'm doing. And probably um, someone asked there a few minutes ago, um, I think for anyone from their 40s up, male or female, I think you do have to have some form of resistance training yes. there, kind of helping the bones, right? But even yoga um, itself has a lot of resistance. So your, your hands might be on the ground holding a certain pose for a certain amount of time. It will strengthen you up and it has that resistance, which is really, really good. It's nice, it's slow, you feel yeah. comfortable, you're in different positions, it is deadly, it's because you do push yourself to your own limits, it's very good. And especially if you're, just say, unsure or nervous about going into weight training or resistance training for the first time, you're like, oh look, I just don't feel strong enough, and you think you have to lift heavy, you get benefits, like yoga and Pilates, uh, small movement classes like that are really beneficial, and it also give you that confidence. So when you do go into a gym and you do, just say, pull those resistance bands, or dumbbells, whether it's a gym or at home, you'll feel more comfortable because you're used to challenging your muscles already, where at first you'll feel a bit jelly. You're like, whoa, I don't know where that was going at all. So you always want to feel under control. So that's another thing where like younger lads like myself, we wear back all clothes inside the gym <laughs> and we're lifting as heavy as you can. But sure, if the technique is all, all over the place, you're not getting the correct benefits of why you're doing the exercise in the first place. So yeah. slow and control is so, so beneficial. It's also a version of just a time under tension, which is a great way of training. Um, you have German volume training, which is really kind of slow movements, eight seconds plus holding it for like about eight seconds and back up. All your legs go jelly very quickly. So yeah. even though it's very slow, it gets deadly. So even if you're doing some exercise at home, like simple movements, just say like squats and things like that, going up and down slowly like I showed earlier, and uh, like it will get, your legs do go jelly after five, six reps, quicker than you think like. Okay. And then, Uh, 
Pardon? That's it. I think I'm back anyway. I sorry, we 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 spiraled a bit there, Ray. Ah, that's okay. We, we spiraled we spiraled for a minute, so I don't know, it happens sometimes. Um uh, the best uh, technology in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the joy is off. Um that's great. And and you know, one of the so say sorry, just another thing. Um if say there's you know and there will be people who are watching this um video that they're maybe not exercising at all um you know maybe it's maybe they you know might do a small walk um you know and that might be it you know what what would you say to someone who you know understands that they need to do it from the point of view of their brain health you know what yeah. where would you say what would you say to start so I would say um, make your just say fitness goals, especially when it's connected to your mental health. Do it week by week because if we we're like if we we're thinking to ourselves, I have to do something every single day. Like you know, work might get in the way, real life might get in the way, and you mightn't have that opportunity of where you're allocating thirty minutes for that exercise. So just say if you go, okay, week one, I'm going to try to do three workouts for myself, and I know I'm not, I'm kind of starting from scratch again. So even if those workouts are like 15, 20 minutes, just as long as you get moving. So week one, you might like to say Monday, you hit it. You're like, yes, great start to the week. Tuesday, you might even hit it again. You're like, this is fantastic. But then Wednesday, Thursday happens. You're like, oh, look. But at least this way, you have three more days to get that one extra workout instead of going, I'll start again next Monday. Because everyone's got that attitude, I'll start again next Monday. So if you have those daily goals, yeah. you're much more likely to feel like, to say, a failure because you missed out on something when real life could have hit. So anything happens mm. every day. So like if you only have weekly yeah. goals where it's not every day, then it's easier if something gets in the way, you can go back on track and you feel like, okay, nothing's wrong. I'm still on my goals. And that's the same way to just say even healthy meals. So instead of trying to eat all day well and eating really healthy every single meal, try to start off at how many meals are you eating at the moment that are healthy. Just say if you're eating three, four meals a day over seven days, that could go up to just say 28 meals in a week. So even if you start off, just say, okay, 14 meals, half my week, I am definitely eating healthy. So at the end of that okay. week, Joe, so you're still able to yeah. get your takeaway, you're still able to have your bottle of wine, so you're not like losing out on anything, but you're just giving yourself that challenge of either every second meal is healthy or breakfast every day is healthy and every second lunch is healthy and dinner, I'll relax, I'll work on that another time. So there yeah. are meals or times that you can change for the better, but you're also kind of, it's a positive reinforcement saying, okay, these are little goals that I can attain weekly. So if you have a bad day, feck it, that's grand, it's gone. The next day we move on. Move Instead of going daily goals. Yeah. And because it's always, oh, next Monday, next Monday. Uh, starting off, even if it's just, say, 15, 20 minutes of exercising. Um, I do have a show at the moment on RTE1 uh, called Ray Noche's Fitness 15. Uh, it'll get you going. Uh, it's only on for 15 minutes, so you can do the workout with me live on TV. It's 20 past two, uh, most days anyway, on RT1. So that just gets you moving. Even if it's something you see on YouTube, uh, you do just get moving like that. Upper body, lower body, uh, small little exercises. I do have a few videos on my social media. You can copy them. But it doesn't matter if it's Joe Wicks, as long as you're getting moving. And even if the workout on YouTube is half hour and you're doing 12 minutes, that's brilliant. That's a start. Next day, you're a bit yeah. tender. I a positive frame of mind when you are training uh, because don't take it day by day because then you can stay positive. If you go day by day, there's a more chance of you feeling negative about yourself because you missed this or you missed that instead of looking at week by week. It's just uh, a way of staying positive and saying, okay, I've Friday, Saturday and Sunday to do one workout. I'll definitely get that done. So then week, the next week, week on, after four or five weeks, you'll see that you're developing really good habits. 
you'll yeah. see that after working out, which you haven't even realized before, that you actually feel better about yourself. That kind of gray cloud over your head starts to vanish. And that could be over to something that you're doing you don't even realize until about an hour later, you're like, ha, huh, that was a good old day. But you mightn't realize that first, but then yeah. you do it for a few weeks, you start to feel great. Then you miss like four or five workouts in a row, like every day. And then you see that gray fog coming back and you're like, you know what, I think I need to work out. And then sometimes you need yeah. to, you that kind of grey cloud, you're like, oh, I feel great, and then get it back. You're like, do you know what? The exercise was a real benefit to me, and I've noticed that myself. Because when you do notice something yourself, then you're far more inclined to do something. Whether, like, you enjoy the workout or the workouts just get rid of that grey head, grey cloud, and clear your head. As long as you <laughs> notice the benefits, then you keep going for it. And, and you know what? I, I don't think I've ever spoken to anyone who's who's done exercise and felt worse after it. You know, like we... Exactly, yeah. Before, does anyone look forward to a run? I look forward to my Sunday runs because they're generally the slowest. But um, yeah, yeah. anything else, you know, is kind of, uh, yeah. But you always feel better after it. Um, someone asked, this will be saved on ITGV later so you can watch it. And on ITGV as well, hopefully it should be easier that it won't be pausing as much. Um, oh, so <laughs> Um, Ray, would you share with me um, the details about the program on RT that you're on every day? And I'll share that for people to watch. Cool. Um, so 20 past two every day on RTE1. It's called the Ray and O'Shea Fitness 15. So it's myself and Dahi O'Shea. And uh, it's just a fitness exercise. You're doing uh, three sets of three minute exercises with me. So I'm doing them live on TV with you. And uh, it's a great way just to get active. Some days we do yoga, some days it's a bit more intense, some days we do abs, some days it's just a bit more fun. So as long as you're moving, they're a little bit different and you'll feel afterwards that you're smiling away and then you'll start seeing the benefits of actually exercising. So obviously you get at the plus one and um, it's on the RTE player, but uh, 20 past two, Ray no Shea, Fitness 15. Brilliant, brilliant. I'll, I'll share that too on, uh, on stories later for everyone. Um, Thank you. So I think any any final tips, Ray, you'd like to give everyone viewing in? Yeah, just stay positive. Like we're always, always on our own fitness journeys. Sometimes we're flying fit, sometimes we're feeling really sluggish, but we know we can get back to that fitness level again that we were at before. Don't be hard on yourself. We're constantly beating each other up. We're constantly looking online and seeing these Adonises and gods and on social media and TV and stuff. So Fitness is a long journey. We're always seeing people's before and after pictures and we go, wow, that's amazing, even though it took six months to build. And then you're thinking, oh, why can't I be like that? It took six months. It does take time, but you will start to notice the differences. And when you do start noticing the differences, then you feel great about yourself and you just start smiling more and just more positive about things and hopefully a clearer head, which is very, very important. Yeah. And your body is stronger as well. So that's always a nice benefit to it. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, uh, that's super, Ray. Thanks a million. And I would say, Tanya, no I'm going to check out some of the videos on your social media page. So I might later on in the week, um, I might post some links to those out on the email newsletter as well for mm -hmm. everyone. Um, so thanks a million, Ray. And thanks everyone for joining in. Um, and I'll save this tight to GB. Class. Okay, Have a great day, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye now.